The FBI has arrested a professor in Arkansas on fraud charges over financial ties to China. And this is not the first time we have heard a story like this. Apparently, there are many academics who are secretly getting paid by China. And I'll be very careful here. Could be sending information on U.S. funded research to the Chinese. Now, there are a lot of concerns about Chinese infiltration. There's military tensions with China. So, yeah, China kind of is a principal U.S. adversary right now. And it would appear the FBI is doing some digging into people who are secretly working at the behest of China and know it and are lying. And this story is crazy. Apparently, somebody found a hard drive, went through it, and it turns out this guy knew he had a conflict and was purposefully trying to hide it. Now he's getting arrested. We have another story, however. The U.S. to accuse China of trying to hack vaccine data as virus redirects cyber attacks. This is where things start getting crazy. I, I, I don't want to do like a full segment on China and military tensions and escalation, but this does play into that. There's concerns among Western intelligence agencies, the United States, that China is racing towards a COVID vaccine they can use to extort the rest of the world. Now we're hearing that they may or the U.S. wants to accuse them of trying to hack vaccine data. Makes sense. And we're now here. We're also hearing of all of these different professors who have secretly been getting paid by China and potentially relaying U.S. research to a foreign government illegally. Let's read the story. We'll, we'll, we'll break it all down. The Washington Post reports a professor at the University of Arkansas specializing in electrical engineering has been arrested by the FBI and charged with wire fraud after being accused of failing to tell federal authorities about his jobs and payments from Chinese companies, authorities announced Monday. Simon Eng had close ties with the Chinese government and Chinese companies and failed to disclose those when required to do so in order to receive grant money from NASA, according to a criminal complaint filed against him. Eng was arrested Friday and court papers were unsealed Monday. A lawyer for Eng declined to comment. Now, Many people are probably saying, yeah, 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 but do we really have proof? Well, it seems we do, because according to information from a hard drive that got leaked, seems like the guy knew what he was doing. The case marks the latest strike by the Justice Department against what national security officials say is a problem at some American universities, professors and researchers hiding their financial and professional arrangements with Chinese entities in violation of ethics rules for federal grant money. In January, the FBI arrested the chair of Harvard University's chemistry department on charges that he lied about his work for a Chinese university. At the time, John Demers, the head of the Justice Department's National Security Division, said American universities should take this threat seriously and continue to take actions to confront it. Ang, 63, is the director of the High Density Electronic Center in the University of Arkansas's Department of Electrical Engineering. He has worked at the school for decades. Since 2013, Ang's work received more than $5 million in federal grant money from NASA and other agencies, according to the criminal complaint filed against him. I'm going I'm to I'm stop right here, man. At what point does this become treason or spying? Our tax dollars, our government is giving people money to do research. What are they doing with that research? And why are they taking money from a U.S. adversary? Now, I understand some would argue that formally we're not enemies or at war with China, but come on. The U.S. has Cold War style conflicts with a bunch of different countries and China is a growing power. Should we be allowing this? The answer is no. And that's why the FBI is arresting these people. But is it just wire fraud or is, or is the FBI worried about actually levying treason charges because of the implications that would make about the U.S. and China's you know, relationship? They say officials said the investigation began when a university staffer examined a hard drive in the library's lost and found bin trying to see whether they could identify the device's owner. The drive contained emails, apparently from Eng, including one that said, quote, there are things that are becoming very difficult for me recently because of the political climate. You can search the Chinese website regarding what the U.S. will do to uh, 2,000 talent scholars. Not many people here know I am one of them, but if this leaks out, my job here will be in deep troubles. I have to be very careful or else I may be out of my job from this university. Here's a guy who knew what he was doing was wrong, who was taking money from our from, from us, our taxpayer dollars, and then saying straight up, no one can know he could get in trouble for this. China runs a number of talent programs, I put it in quotes, designed to attract accomplished scientists and experts from around the world to provide expertise to China's own research and development programs. 
The criminal complaint filed against Eng charges the professor in 2014 disclosed the University of Arkansas his participation in China's Thousand Talent Scholars program, but did not reveal his involvement in other such programs from 2012 to 2018. Eng obviously knew about the requirement to disclose such conflicts of interest and deliberately kept all such conflicts of interest from the University of Arkansas and NASA. A University of Arkansas spokesman, spokeswoman said Eng has been suspended without pay from his responsibilities at the university, and the university is actively cooperating with federal authorities in the investigation. You know what, man? The United States has done too little for too long, and we have been taken advantage of. We have lost our manufacturing, and we are being extracted. Our research, our jobs being stripped and taken away. And it's really funny. I saw a post on Reddit where they tried to make the claim that Republicans, conservatives think China is the real problem instead of the politicians in power who sold away this, this, this country. It's funny because both are true. And it's a weird thing to try and criticize Republicans because bad politicians were, it, it's, it's a ridiculous argument, but it, it was a top post on Reddit. Let me tell you. Yes, both Democrats and Republicans alike for decades were extracting the U.S. I mean, it's apparent now. Our manufacturing was being sold overseas and to other countries through outsourcing. Universities were hiring people, and this is less the fault of the politicians, but these people were in on the take from China giving away our research. At least that's how it seems. Well, China's been stealing our intellectual property for a long time. You can see how China makes knockoffs of all these other products. This is where it's starting to get serious. Okay, we've got escalating military tensions in the South China Sea. I won't get into too much detail on that stuff, but yeah, things are getting particularly worrisome in the physical in, in, in terms of military uh, conflict, physical conflict. Take a look at this story from the New York Times. U.S. to accuse China of trying to hack vaccine data as virus redirect cyber attacks. Iran and other nations are also looking to steal data and exploit the pandemic with attacks on infrastructure, officials say. This is a story from just the other, uh, from a couple days ago. The FBI and the Department of Homeland Security are preparing to issue a warning that China's most skilled hackers and spies are working to steal American research in the crash effort to develop vaccines and treatments for the coronavirus. The efforts are part of a surge in cyber theft and attacks by nations seeking advantage in the pandemic. The warning comes as Israeli officials accuse Iran of mounting an effort in late April to cripple water supplies as Israelis were confined to their houses, though the government has offered no evidence to back its claim. More than a dozen countries have redeployed military and intelligence hackers to glean whatever they can about other nations' virus responses. Even American allies like South Korea and nations that do not typically stand out for their cyber abilities, like Vietnam, have suddenly redirected their state-run hackers to focus on virus-related information, according to private security firms. So this will be, they say a draft is forthcoming. We'll see how this plays out. But it's not surprising. When we're learning that China is paying people at universities and there have been several arrests, why would I be surprised that they're now telling these people and their hackers to shift their focus and try and target vaccine information? Perhaps before it was just general technology, electrical engineering, smartphones, whatever. But maybe now they're saying we need to get this vaccine. I got a couple more stories. You check this out. The New York Times. Chinese agents helped spread messages that sowed virus panic in the U.S., officials say. Now, this story is from April 22nd, not that long, a couple weeks ago. American officials were alarmed by fake text messages and social media posts that said President Trump was locking down the country. Experts see a convergence with Russian tactics. I bring this story up not necessarily to rehash something that was old. It's kind of annoying. And it's not necessarily the same as China trying to exfiltrate our information, steal our information, or people working at American universities being in the take. But it does show that we are facing a serious conflict with China. I remember these text messages and, and, and they were clever. But man, people fall for this stuff. And I, I wonder how, you know, let me tell you a story. All right. I wake up one day, I get a text message saying this was back in like March or something. I don't know, early March. Donald Trump was going to lock down the country for two weeks, citing some specific act. And it was completely fake and absurd. And there was no real information on it. And I didn't know why someone had texted me this. But they all said the same thing. My friend, you know, was in a meeting and they said this. Everybody gets this text message. It wasn't the only one. There were a bunch of like it. And I thought to myself, why would somebody hear something from some? OK, why, why, why would a person get a text message that says my friend was in a meeting and Trump said this? 
then forward a message to a friend saying it was their friend in a meeting. You don't know who this person is. You didn't fact check, but that's how people fall for this stuff. And that's how you end up with fake news. Right now, we've got a serious problem. We have a growing military conflict with China. And right now we are seeing the, the, the level of Chinese infiltration of the U.S. to what degree it's impacting us. And it is. Not only is China trying to steal our technology and information and they're getting caught doing it and they're doing it in sneaky, underhanded, underhanded ways, but they're using misinformation to jam up our response. I mean, listen, man, this is the question I've asked. At what point do we say it's an act of war? OK, I don't know. Don't ask me. Perhaps it requires direct military conflict in the South China Sea or you know, China doing something with some guns. But if they're spreading disinformation that's getting Americans killed, and it is, at what point do we call them out and dem- make demands of it? Well, I'll tell you what. Of course, Donald Trump always does. And if you saw my segment from earlier this morning, you know what the problem is. The problem is the media. Brian Stelter says it is racist for Trump to tell Asian American reporter to ask China, shut up, dude. This is not the time. Brian Stelter is wasting time talking about nonsense, complaining about Donald Trump being racist. That's not an argument. That has nothing to do with informing your audience. It is an emotional dig to drop brownie points for your virtue signaling base. Right now, we have a foreign adversary trying to steal our vaccine data and not just China, many other countries. You'd think that would be more important. Okay, I get it. Brian Stelter runs a media commentary show, but we still know what he does is fake. He won't criticize MSNBC for the same thing that, you know, for them doing this exact same thing that Fox does. It is fake trash. What we can what we can expect is that if you try to call out what China is doing, if you try to if you try to mention they're lying in their data, they're stealing data, well that makes you a bigot. This will will get will will, will escalate. I could only assume as the FBI makes more arrests and the investigations are ongoing, we are going to see a lot more of this. Now, Mike Pompeo said a few months ago that this is, it's worse than you realize, that the, the infiltration in the United States is extensive. And it probably is. And it's seemingly innocuous, I would, I would argue. A talent scout. It's no big deal, but these people are lying. They know why they're lying. So you, you, you can see this come in like multiple levels. The first thing you have is just somebody who happens to get paid for a contracting job through China. What are they really doing at a university? Probably giving away our our secrets or at least giving them hints as to what we're doing. Maybe these people at the universities aren't giving them schematics or anything, but it's still very beneficial to China to get access to our universities and our taxpayer dollars, money from NASA, for instance. Of course, then the next step is to do hard hacking. I just had to stop recording for a second, so it threw me off because you may have heard it. A bunch of jets were flying overhead, two rounds of what looked like some kind of fighter jet. So forgive me, I've lost my my direct train of thought. I kind of know where I was, but I decided to just throw this in there. I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm recording in the new studio, and I heard a very loud rumbling, and I thought it was someone like like a garbage truck or something. And then the second time it hit, I, I'm like, I can't keep recording this. This is weird. And I look out and I see three fighter jets of some kind. So I don't know. You know, these things happen. I'm not suggesting it's a big deal. But considering what I'm talking about, I was uh, I thought it was interesting. Like the first one I tried to ignore. But anyway, the point I was trying to make before I had to cut off is that the first thing they do is light. It's seemingly innocuous. The next thing they do is just exfiltration. And the third thing uh, they're doing, direct disruption. So we are seriously taking some kind of like there are various levels of attack that are occurring against the United States from from China. This is not the article I meant to show. This is the article. China ag- Chinese agents sowing these messages are jamming up our response, causing panic. And you got to understand how this plays out when you've got a group of people that are, are susceptible to fake news. And, and we have a lot of them on all of, of all political factions of all ages. They are very easily. And th- this is why these fake messages work. This is going to result in election interference. We should call it out for what it is. Right now, the Democrats are complaining about Donald Trump's response uh, to the coronavirus. They're using this fear and this panic that is being sowed by our foreign adversaries. Now, listen, you want to talk about Russian interference, Russian collusion and all that stuff. Fine. Of course you can do it because I think Russia and many other countries are doing this. We've always thought so. What we can see here is that what China has done has been substantially more effective. 
Like when, when, when they were using social media bots to disrupt Spain, Italy, and Taiwan, that had a real impact. When the World Health Organization put out disinformation saying that there was no, in, you know, de- no data suggesting human, human, human to human transmission, even though China knew, you can see just how much of a threat China actually is. And what do you get from the media? Well, that was the, the article I was just showing. We, we, th- this is what they've tried doing. They've tried arguing that, say, the right is trying to scapegoat China. It's the weirdest thing. Joe Biden dabbled at it. Didn't work, uh, didn't work out too well for him. Joe Biden ran a campaign ad claiming Trump was soft on China. That's a bad, bad route to try and go to, especially when the FBI is currently rounding up people who are uh, working for China and not revealing this. So listen, military planes flying over my house aside, I don't know uh, if I'm, I'm kidding, by the way, but I don't know what we can expect in terms of military escalation, because the things we've seen in the South China Sea, as I mentioned, and, there, and I mentioned this again, I know for people who already have heard this, just just there's a lot of people who haven't heard this. These things could be normal. All right. We've seen U.S. warships deployed. We've seen an elephant walk with bombers. We've seen China deploying a strike group. This could be normal. It, it's just that we're focused on it right now because we're all locked down. And I want to make sure that's very, very clear. So uh, for con- context for people, too, just to give you an understanding of how I do the content I do, not everybody watches every single video I do. So for those of you that are consistently watching every video I put out a day, because I do about an hour and 40 minutes of content, you might hear me say a lot of the same things in different videos. And it's because, you know, initially I used to assume that people watching would know everything. I- I'll tell you what, man, I've, I've opened up YouTube videos from people where they make, they make those assumptions and I just turn them off right away because I, I don't know. So, so, so forgive me. You know, to, uh, for those of you that just catch videos, you probably like, oh, I didn't know that and stuff. So a- anyway, long story short, we are seeing an escalation of tensions. We are seeing more arrests. We are seeing an infiltration. And uh, admittedly, my train of thought was completely crushed when a bunch of fighter jets flew over my house. So I guess I'll just leave it there uh, and say, if you want to, if you want to complain about Ukrainian collusion or you, you know the Ukrainian interference, Russian interference, I think those are valid arguments. But they didn't have the impact that China has certainly had. I don't know what to expect, but I will say, I think if Donald Trump gets reelected, there's going to be a hammer drop in terms of how we deal with China. Now, I understand, look, Trump's already done the tariffs. China, you know, some people are saying China's flinching because they're, they're starting to bend to, you know, what Trump's demands are. I think in Trump's first term, he's taken, and I know it's trying to say a lighter touch on this. I know he's taken pretty much a hammer in a lot of ways, but he was jammed up a lot by the Russiagate stuff, by impeachment. Only now is Donald Trump clear of these nonsensical investigations. They're trying to launch more. They're trying to jam him up, but he's, he's cleared them. Impeachment failed. Russiagate was, was a scam. And now information is coming out just in time for the election. I think if Trump gets reelected, you will see tenfold what Trump has been doing, for better or for worse. If you like the guy, if you hate the guy, it's going to ramp up to an absurd degree, in my opinion. Just before the election, I think we're going to see a bunch of heavy moves and if Trump gets reelected, I'm assuming he will, it is going to be like unleashing the floodgates because that's it. Last term, time to drop the hammer. We'll see how things play out. But based on statements from Mike Pompeo, I think it'll be, it, it, it's, I think it's going to shock this country for sure. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. at youtube.com slash timcast. Uh, it's my main channel. Go to, go to timcast.net. It's in the, in the description below. You'll see it. It is a different YouTube channel. I will see you there.